Hey, Lauren, you asked about solving rotations, whether it's for a middle school or a geometry class. When you solve with rotations, quadrants one, two, three, and four are labeled this way because we rotate 90, 180, 270, and 360 counterclockwise. We always rotate counterclockwise unless we're specif specifically told to rotate counter, I'm sorry, to rotate clockwise. So if we were to just choose a random x, y as our original point, I'm just going to use the point 3, 4. So we're given this point 3, 4. So let's go ahead and graph that. Over 3, up 4. I want my students to see what happens as 3, 4 gets rotated 90 degrees. So we're going to lock that point in. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now, as you can see, the points move from quadrant one to quadrant two. I would then say the point has now moved four to the left and three up. So the 90 degree reflection has created the point negative four, three. How can I compare that to my original X and Y? Well, this X and Y moved the X to the back, and the Y value came to the front and changed signs. So the rule for a 90 degree rotation is to go from the XY you started with and make it negative Y X in that rule. If I were to take the original point of 3, 4, and I want to rotate 180 degrees, again, counterclockwise, always unless specifically told to do clockwise, point 1 is going to move 90 degrees twice. So it should move from quadrant 1 to quadrant 3. So let's show that. This is a 90 degree rotation once, twice, and there's my 180. So starting from my original point of 3, 4, I now have a coordinate of negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now my new coordinate is negative 3, negative 4. If I compare that to my original coordinate, the X and Y has changed signs. So the rule for a 180 degree rotation is negative X, negative Y. And finally, for a 270 degree rotation, it is 390 degrees. So I would go back to my original point and show 190, 290s, which is where I just was, 390 turns. Let me go back, one too many. So there's my 270 degree rotation. Starting with point 34, how have we changed it? Well, we've now gone four to the right and three down. So positive four, negative three. So as I can see, the X and Y values have interchanged. Y has now come to the front, but the original X value of three has moved to the back and it has changed signs. So the rule for a 270 degree rotation is a Y negative X. Last, to show a 360, I sometimes just show that this is 90, turning one direction. If I show 180, I'd face the opposite direction, and 360 is a complete circle. So what happens if I rotate this point one more? Well, I would turn it back to where it started in quadrant one. So my coordinate three, four in quadrant one remains three, four, which is the proof for why a 360 degree rotation is the same thing as staying at the starting point. When it comes to doing this clockwise, another easy way to show this moving in the opposite direction, so quadrant one to four to three to two back to one as clockwise is this way. If I don't move this point at all, 
A rotation of 360 is the same thing as a rotation of going nowhere. A rotation of 270 to the left is the same thing as going 90 to the right, or clockwise. So 90 degrees clockwise is the same as 270 counterclockwise. If I rotate another 90, a second 90 would be 180 degrees, and a third 90 would be a 270 degree clockwise rotation. So as you can probably see, the sum of a counter and a clockwise rotation is always 360 degrees because the points are what we call coterminal. They start and end in the same spot based on this rotation. So that is how I would show it. Again, if you've got these graphs into portable whiteboards, that is another su uh, suggestion I would have.